Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going back to the Arduino power monitoring project. And as you can see here, we now have an SD card shield on there so we can do some data logging. And what you're not going to see is the OLED screen because the library for the INA219, the DS3231, and the SSD1306 was too much. It had uh, too many variables and it overloaded everything. So then the other day I thought, well, okay, we can just switch to Omega. Well, the INA219 doesn't want to compile for the Omega. So I thought, all right, great. Next thing we'll do is we'll go with an ESP8266. Well, it won't compile for that either. So we're back with the Uno. So we've got our DS3231 real-time clock, our INA219 high side power monitor, and an SD shield 3.0 with an SD card. And then in, for what we're monitoring, we have the LED array here which I will power up and there you can see the LED array is powered up so let's go take a look at the code to add the data logging and then we'll check it out in action all right the code for the Arduino power monitor this is v1.2 and you'll notice what we've added is our spy library and our SD library and we've taken out the uh, SSD 1306 so we need to add chip select in here so that the SD card can be addressed and then we come down here into our setup and we say if not SD card begin on chip select then serial print card failed or not present and that will basically end the program otherwise it initializes the SD card all of this is the same as before with one change we're now doing a serial print instead of a display print and now here's where we start the data logging we're going to begin by creating a string called data string which that's what we're going to send to the SD card and it's empty and we're going to create a float variable for each of our things we're monitoring so we have shunt voltage shunt current bus voltage and bus power and then what we're going to do is we are going just to add these things to that empty data string so we begin by saying data string plus equals string of date so it's taking that variable date and casting it as a string and adding it to the uh, data string then we add a comma then we add the month the year the hour the minute and the second then we add our values shunt voltage shunt current bus voltage and bus power so now that string is all filled up with those variables which have all been cast as, into that string. So our next thing is we say file data file equal SD open and the name of our file which is data log text and then we write to it. What do we write to it? Data file print line data string. So that's that data string string up here that we created then we close it and we're also going to send it to the serial monitor so we can see what we're doing otherwise it gives an error then we're waiting five seconds in between reads you can change this variable for whatever you want between the reads alright let's uh, check it out in action alright power up the old Arduino here And there's nothing for you to see on this end. 
Now, if I'm just going to zoom out here and bring this back. And you can see we're given our LED array 3 volts. I'm going to mess with that a little bit so that you can see the changes in the data log. Let's go over to the computer. All right, let's open up our serial monitor. And now you can see the values that we have here. Right there. And then you can see what we are writing to the SD card. So we're writing the day, the month, the year, hour, minute, second, and then our shunt voltage, our shunt current, our bus voltage, and our bus power. Okay. So now that's going on. I'm going to adjust up the um, current a little bit here. And now you can see our bus power at 3 volts was 449.4 milliwatts. And now we've gone up to 3.2 volts. And our bus power has gone up to 1125 milliwatts. And then you can see that here and here. So now let's take a look at what you can do with this data file. So here's our data file, which is the data log dot text. And you can see our values are all comma separated value files, which allows us to easily import it into a spreadsheet. I'm using Google Sheets here. And you can see we have day, month, year, hour, minute, second, shunt millivolt, shunt milliamp, bus volt, and bus milliwatts. And I've highlighted shunt millivolts and shunt milliamps and created a simple graph out of them. So that's the kind of thing that you can do with data logging in a comma separated value data file. Now you can monitor this and you know you could do it against time or however you want and it'll work out very nicely. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. What I'm going to do next is um, see if I can massage the library file for the INA219 so that it will compile for the ESP8266 and we will go from there. That will allow us to take this up to what I would call, you know, the next level. So, again, this is um, this nice little DC to DC buck converter I'm using. This is the one from icstation.com, and I will put a link to it in the video below. It, it's very nice, works very, very simply. And so you can adjust by tenth of a volt by a quick press. And then it adjusts, go down, or a long press, it will adjust by a single volt. So if you guys enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.